Thank you guys for joining me today and watching the latest detail on Stoffer Garage. Um, yeah, this Toyota Highlander has been sitting for a very long period of time. If you guys notice the outside dirt and also as we get pressure washing, you'll notice how much of that algae just grime has been bedded into that paint that we'll have to take care of after we clean it all up. But the inside's a whole different story. Uh, there's every every inch of carpet in this thing has been completely stained and destroyed. Um, it is obviously a, a kit hauler, you can tell by a lot of the different things inside of it. Uh, but we're gonna get this thing completely transformed and cleaned up. And as you guys know, subscribing to this channel, making sure those notifications turn on is what makes this channel possible. So if you guys have not subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. And as we go through this video, I'm gonna be answering more of your guys' questions that you asked in the comments um, as we detail this thing and make it restored back to news. So. Let's go ahead and get started. Now as we clean up these wheels, the first question is from Chelsea Fernandez and she asked me if I've ever turned down a vehicle. Um, typically I would say that I've never turned down a single vehicle, uh, but there is one instance where I had to say no and it was a Uber driver that said that somebody was coming home from the hospital and had a wound opened up that caused a mess everywhere in the back seat. The police were involved with a report and all this stuff and apparently it was just an accident and something happened. but. You never know, and the story itself was just something that I, I just couldn't take on, and also just from a health standpoint, um, it was just one of those one of those vehicles, and the only one so far that I've I've actually turned down. All right, so for today's foam cannon color of choice, I chose blue. Um, it obviously looks a lot bluer if this wasn't in direct sunlight and the camera's doing its flickering dance thing of ISO and color balance. But um, yeah, I was really happy. A lot of you guys want to purchase the colored foam when I have that come out. I'm gonna make a small batch run like I mentioned in last week's video. And it seems like a lot of you want pink or purple. Um, blue is a big choice. I've heard red, black, green. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and make sure we hit a lot of those colors for you guys, but I think we're going to have to start with pink or purple. Um, and also, they look really good on cars, especially when you're washing them. But as this soap is dripping off, the next question I have is from Not So Nasty. And 
Uh, they asked me why I always use the crevice tool and not the wide angle vacuum uh, tool when I uh, vacuum the inside. And it comes down to flow velocity, um, especially with the wider angled head on those vacuums. You know, they, they do pick up a lot, um, but as you use a smaller one, you can get a higher flow velocity of air, which causes a greater suction power um, across the vacuum opening. Uh, this is, I'm starting to get my engineering talk going, so I'm gonna stop right there. But for me, it, it does take a little bit longer. It's not as productive, but if you use the wider angle head, you're not gonna be able to remove as much embedded dirt as if you use the crevice tool. Plus, when you get into some of those tight reach areas, if you already have it on there, it kind of speeds it up. So it's kind of a wash when you look at a time perspective. So um, that's the reason why I usually stick with that, that tiny crevice tool. Now the next question is from Anthony Lubin. He asked me, do I prefer a home-based detailing business, a shop, or a mobile? Um, for me, having a shop or, or a mobile setup is uh, just not worth it at the moment. Um, but that's my business in particular. I think for everyone it's different, especially depending on how you operate your business, where your customers are located. Um, are you just doing detailing? Are you doing tint? Um, ceramic coatings, things like that. You know, uh, if you're doing tint ceramic coatings and doing a lot of that higher end stuff, or if you need a lift, obviously a shop or a home based business is possible. Um, obviously, a shop would be better in that case, just from a room perspective. Um, but it all kind of depends on your own personal business and how you operate it and what market you want to go after. Because, you know, if if there's not a lot of mobile detailing businesses in your area, obviously that setup would be advantageous to you, especially from finding a certain clientele that doesn't have the capabilities of dropping it off. So um, it kind of all depends. But for me personally, working out of the house right now works just as fine. Um, but I, I would be lying if I said I wouldn't didn't want a shop to have the extra room.
next question somebody asked me uh, via Leech said, what is your favorite part about detailing? Um, favorite part for me is it's honestly the whole process, if you will. Um, you're kind of getting to see something that comes in looking like crap and restoring it back to new. Um, and for me, it's almost like meditation, if you will, because I put on my headphones, listen to music, listen to podcasts, um, think, just, you know, think of ideas. And it's just one of those processes where you're as you're working, you have just this ability to have creative flow, um, if that makes sense. So I enjoy it for that reason. It's more of just a, a way to accomplish something and, and meet a goal and, and, and get something done. So um, that's why I like I like detailing. Probably my favorite part. All right, so guys, while all this detail's happening, while you're watching this extraction shot going on right now, I do wanna say thanks to Keeps for helping make this video possible. It helps support this channel. It helps me keep making free detail videos for you guys because all the details on this channel are for free, so they're helping make it happen. And because of that, there is a subscription online service that helps men keep their hair. And if you guys haven't noticed, whenever I don't wear a hat, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, two out of three men by the age of 35 experience hair loss. <gasps> You know, I'm, these are kind of going deeper back here and I'm trying to grow out this mohawk thing. I haven't got the cul-de-sac thing going on yet. You know, that's why I use Keeps. Keeps helps me keep the hair I currently have and making it fuller and better and just makes it stay. That's kind of the goal here, right? And whether you're looking just to prevent hair loss, stimulate growth, take better care of your hair, Keeps has you covered. And all Keeps treatment plans are doctor recommended. It all comes directly to your door. It's half the price of what it is for like in the normal pharmacy that you go pick it up at. It's delivered to your door. Makes it super easy to take care of the hair that you still got. Oh my. And hair loss stops with Keeps. So that's why I need you guys to take advantage of a 50% off discount by going to www.keeps.com slash stauffer. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash S-T-A-U-F-F-E-R to take advantage of that 50% off code. Go do it guys, keep that hair.
Now these extractions, um, this was definitely a video where I was super happy that I've, I've, I own this Mighty Extractor. Um, because the amount of stuff in this seat without having to use a steam cleaner as well as the extractor and switching different tools, um, this thing slayed this entire detail. Like this shot is super nasty. Like look at this thing. Like how, I don't even know how you get this much stuff underneath here, but it was a complete color change. It was, it was, this was probably my favorite part of the extraction process. Um, but the last question I got was from Lachlan Walker who asked me, have I ever been blamed for damage that was not my fault? Um, I would say when it comes to that sort of thing, I have never had that happen to me. And that's because when it comes to doing a detail, I always inspect everything before I always test, you know, button switches, make sure everything's working. You know, usually I drive the car home from a dealership or a client's house or somebody that I'm a friend, um, test things, make sure the windows work, make sure this works. If it doesn't work, you know, let them know before you start, you know, being thorough with that process ensures your, you know, liability wise, um, but I've actually have damaged something on accident and it was a windshield. I was cleaning the windshield uh, with my detailing tool. There was a crack previously, I think in the windshield or I just had superhuman strength at the time. Um, but I was pressing so hard to clean it cause it was covered in like smoking residue um, that I cracked the windshield. And I called uh, one of the local places that does windshields, got it fixed. Obviously, I told the owner before it happened and said that, hey, this is getting replaced. I need the car for an extra day. They came out, replaced it, and that was that. And sometimes, you know, whenever you make a mistake, if you're on a job, you know, do the right thing and just, just fix it and, you know, let the people know and be honest. And, you know, I've never had a problem just by doing that perspective. But the next question is from Ben and how did I start my detailing business and how hard is it to run a YouTube channel? Um, for me personally, the detailing business started um, by accident, uh, especially later on in life. Um, before that, I used to do it you know, in high school and college for money. Um, but later on in life, it kind of just fell into place and, and started um, by accident. Um, and then I kind of started running with it and it was successful. But the, the YouTube channel question for running a YouTube channel, I think that's something that is very, um, hard for people to understand that don't do it, how hard it is and what's involved. But once you start making content, you start getting traction, you start, you know, accumulating more social media platforms. You're trying to keep up with content consistently because consistency is key. Um, you don't realize how much goes into it, especially with these details, you know, making sure you're always scheduled, making sure you always have cars lined up, making sure you're getting the detail done in a considerable amount of time, you know, six to eight hours, but you have the prep and everything before and after clean up and everything else. And then the edit's going to take, if not longer and the thumbnail, everything involved. Um, you know, it, I think it's, 
a misconception when people say that they do YouTube and they have a successful channel that it's easy. Um, then you top on, you know, selling products like foxclean.com where I sell detailing products, managing inventory, answering emails, fulfilling packages, managing employees. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot more involved than people realize. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's something that should deter you if you want to do it. Um, but just be prepared to work your butt off because it's a job that never quits because once you start getting down the rabbit hole of YouTube, trying to figure out what videos and what ideas are going to do better than others, it's something that you just live, sleep and breathe and it doesn't, you never stop working. You're always thinking about it, um, which, you know, that's part of being an entrepreneur anyways. People that own their own business don't really stop working. Rax asked me if I've ever cleaned a car full of glitter and that it gives him nightmares at night. And uh, truthfully, no, I've never done one, but glitter is the devil. I, I, I can't stand glitter, um, even when my kids play with it. It's, um, yeah, glitter, glitter is a nasty thing. It gets into everything and it never goes away. It's just, it's, yeah, I don't like glitter. So I, I hope that never happens. I hope I never have to encounter a glitter-filled car. Um, but that would actually be might be a good video if I had a detail a glitter filled car that would probably be the longest detail I've ever done if I have to do a glitter filled car 100% glitter glitter is a horrible invention <laughs>
the weirdest thing about detailing cars compared to like cleaning your house or something else is once you start taking things apart, you start realizing all of the different bits and components and all of the different areas that collect dirt. Like seat rails in cars are a pain in the butt and you can't ever get it all out. The only way to, I mean, if you disassembled everything inside of a car, put it back together, you're still gonna miss something. So like, I had a comment the other day, somebody mentioned why didn't I take the door panels off to complete, you know, to clean the speaker grill. And as much as I would like to be that thorough, take the dashboard out for that matter, clean all the air vents out. I mean, go through the whole thing top to bottom. I mean, you're talking weeks worth of labor to break down every single component and clean it. So, you know, as a, as a detailer, my biggest flaw when it comes to cleaning these cars and the amount of time it takes to do it when I film these videos for you guys is balancing essentially everything. I mean, you have to balance how far do you go? How, you know, in depth do you go? What do you do to take it to the next step, next level? And as much as like pulling carpets is nice and I like to do it when I need to, you know, it's a cumbersome thing. Like even with the seats pulled out, a lot of the trim panels, you still have to pull out several other things like the center console and other components to get to it. So that's why you don't see it on every video. I haven't done it in a little while because I truly haven't needed to. Um, but also with this being essentially a mini minivan uh, with three rows, there's a lot of surfaces to cover, and if you're trying to film a video that's you know 35, 32 minutes, whatever it needs to be, you have to you have to cut some corners or miss some things um, as instead of being as thorough as you want to be. So, my biggest flaw is time management when it comes to some of this stuff. I'm, I'm just a perfectionist at heart. Now on the steering wheel, this white stuff, it's typically in this situation, um, I could tell this was a female owned car, it's makeup. And sometimes makeup, and when it gets on the fabric seats, or in this case, it gets caked in the steering wheel, the wiper stock, the shifter. Um, I don't know what's in makeup sometimes, but this stuff does not like to come off. So I've used the all purpose cleaner, which I typically dilute. I had to increase the strength a little bit and try again, which got rid of most of it. And then using microfiber tile to wipe it off. Um, the steam cleaner might've helped um, with getting most of it off. But at the same time, I was kind of on a deadline at this point and the, the steam cleaner takes about 35, 40 minutes to truly get hot enough to do it. Um, I didn't think ahead. Um, so if you are detailing your own cars, or if you're doing it for a business, you know, the biggest thing that you can do is try to have everything ready to go, no matter what tool it is, even if you don't think you're going to need it. So that way, if you do run into a situation where it becomes valuable to you and speeding up a detail, you have it available. Um, my biggest problem right now is I got to get a new circuit panel put into my house because I blow the circuits sometimes with just the extractor. And if I try to run the vacuum at the same time or a different thing, I'll pop a breaker. Um, so I, I got to get that fixed just because of the amperage that I guess they pull and my house isn't, um, I think it's only a 15 amp breaker, so it's, it's popping it, but, and I need to upgrade that so that way I can practice what I preach.
But if you guys like this today's video, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, comment down below, share this video with a friend, and I hope you guys learned something today. And also, like I said, if your question did not get answered, comment it again down below, and hopefully next week I'll hit on it and answer as many questions as I can. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next time.